What is up, you guys? We are back, and we are going to continue um, with this uh, word processor, and we're going to work on our action performed method and add a return method, which I will explain very soon. So let's get started right where we left off. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be um, checking if an action occurred. So um, let's get started. First, we're going to check if our save button was clicked. So we do that by typing if, one second, let this extremely low quality um, processor catch up to my typing. So if e.get source, and then of course we add um, parentheses, equals equals save button. Sorry, I haven't coded in a couple days, so I'm a little sketchy right now. So if e dot get source equals equals save button, okay, we've done our first source, and then we'll do if e dot dot get source. Oh my God. Um, equals equals color combo, and then we'll do a check for if e dot. Oh my gosh, e dot get source equals equals font combo and there we go so all we're doing is we're checking if our save button was clicked if our color combo box was clicked and if our font combo box was clicked so let's start doing some stuff with these guys right now I'm just going to add comments because we don't have these classes let, uh, laid out yet um, actually let me check I don't think we have them laid out oh you know what no we do Sorry about that. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating references to these classes. So what that means is that um, we are going to call these classes to perform certain things. For example, if I clicked my save button, I would want my save class to be activated because I would want to save my document. If I chose a different color, I would want my color class to be activated because I want to switch the colors, etc., etc. So right now, I'm just going to simply add a comment that says... Um, call save class and then we'll do one called call color class and we'll do last one for call font class so the reason I'm not doing them right now is because we don't fully have these classes configured or written yet which we will get to eventually so these won't be comments forever obviously but until then we're going to leave them as such we're also going to be doing one more thing this is the return method I was talking about now let me write it and then I'll explain what a return method is. So I write public j text pane and let's name this get text. And then we're simply going to return return text area. So you may be wondering why is this called public j text pane? Rather public void or you know something along the lines of that. So the reason we do this is because we're changing the return type of our method. Every single method you create has a return type. For example, public void action performed or um, public void init. Void is a return type, even though it may not seem like one. Void literally means nothing. So if I did public void, that means I don't want to return anything. Now what does return mean? Well, return means what value you want to return. You want to give back to the user or the program. So if I returned text area, I am returning all the value contained inside my text area variable. So why did I have to set um, this return type to JTextPane? Well, the reason I'm doing that is because I'm returning a JTextPane. If I go here and I go to find declaration, you'll see that this is a JTextPane variable. So it's obvious that I can only return a, J, uh, a JTextPane variable. For example, say I wanted to return um, a string, the string color items. I could type return color items. But right now you'll see it's returning an error. And that's because it cannot convert, convert from a string to a JTEXT pane. So the reason the computer is getting confused is because it sees this method. It sees, oh, okay, I see that you want to 
um, get a JText pane when you call this method. But you didn't return a JText pane, you returned a string. And that's why it's getting confused. So instead of typing a string, we can go back to our text area variable. So you also may be wondering, why do we have return methods when we can just access variables through the variables at the top of our class? Well, the thing about this is that you can't get these guys from other classes. If I'm in my main class, like this one, and I say, oh, I want to grab this text area variable, I can't go into my class, my uh, main class, and type text area equals da 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 da. It wouldn't work that way. The computer would say, um, what variable are you even talking about? But luckily, with my return type, I can manipulate that text area and do whatever I would like with it. So I know that's kind of a long explanation, but just remember that this method, when called, will return um, a value. So that's literally all this means. So the reason we have this here is because we're going to need to get the text of our um, JTEXT pane throughout many times throughout this program. So that's the reason we have this, this method here and why it's functional. So that's enough for today. I will continue this very soon and we will start working with the other classes because we are done with this class. So get pumped about that. And I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.